Hello, and welcome again to John Byte's Summer to Evolve Recruiter Skill Sessions, week nine. I'm here to speak to you today about internal mobility best practices. Um, it is, of course, August 11th. My name is Travis McCormick, and I am the internal mobility subject matter expert here at John Byte. And as you can see, I really like memes a lot, so get used to that theme throughout this presentation here. So what I'm going to speak to you about actually is the most important elements of an internal mobility program. Now, before we go ahead and do that, I wanted to give you just a brief introduction of myself. So um, I'm actually located here in the San Francisco Bay Area. I'm a UC Berkeley graduate. Um, I've been with Jobbite about two years now. I've had some very exciting times working here so far. Actually came from here in the HR technology space, um, particularly around innovation um, and working with companies with their existing talent to make the organizations really be able to optimize the key sources of hire within their organization. So I'm extremely passionate about this topic. I encourage you to pick my brain and ask me any questions offline. Um, please connect with me. Um, but I've been in HR tech now for about 10 years. Um, I'm just really, really passionate about people. So, you know, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and hop into the presentation here. So what you're hopefully going to learn today um, is really just the current state of the talent market, right? I know there's a lot of research out there, so uh, we're going to have some fun with that and talk about kind of the current state and also some of the state before this. Um, so, you know, get excited about that. Um, we'll talk about internal recruitment methods, um, you know, and really just about the employee expectations around um, internal mobility and some of the employer best practices that kind of go hand in hand with that, um, and really how to highlight promotional opportunities, right? So think of how to communicate your program. Um, we also want to make sure that you're able to really be able to fill requisitions with those internal candidates, right? At the end of the day, it's about driving that action to be able to really fill your candidate pipeline and getting good results. Um, so we're going to share with you a little bit about technology you should be able to do that. And then most importantly, you know, why should this all matter, right? Not just for you as the employer, um, and as an employer, you are an employee as well. So um, let's talk about that a little bit. So let's jump into the current state of the market here. So according to some of our recent data that we actually collected through Job Seeker Nation, which is a readily available report, report that I encourage all of you to go ahead and take um, action to download, uh, you know, really a take home here is that you should make it easy for your employees to stay. I think that's pretty, uh, pretty obvious there, but you know, what, what is that really is that 65% of workers never rarely check their company's internal postings, right? So they really prefer to hear about opportunities within their company in different ways. Um, some of them for their manager, right, which actually came in the highest in this study. Um, some of them through internal communications in the system. And then really through personal communication from HR. So these are all ways that, you know, it's easy to help get communications out to your employees. But, you know, some of them we found relevant even in today's economic and trying time, right? But wait, there's more, of course. So, you know, who is more likely to check internal postings, right? We actually did a survey on this, and we found that women, of course, are actually going out there and getting after, which is great. Um, when you look at that, too, and I'll let you read a little bit of the statistics on your own there, but, um, you know, some of the more prevalent findings when I look at this is that, you know, when you look at a company and they're looking to provide platforms to make it easy to share job opportunities, right? Um, you're asking who is more likely to actually work for those types of companies, you find that men actually are more likely to actually do that. So pretty interesting there. Of course, um, you'll find a high degree of college degree, um, people actually investing time um, at those types of organizations because they're generally gonna be more apt to looking for career development and opportunities. So again, I really wanna caveat some of these stats and some of this because this was very recent and taken again um, this isn't your traditional uh, you know, data and, and whatnot that we've, that we've taken in the past. But what I really want to touch on here is that internal mobility isn't going out of style, right? Uh, you know, despite economic conditions, uh, you always have to be investing in the right people, right? Right people, right time. Recruiting remains paramount no matter where we're at or who we are. Um, you can't really be as picky. Uh, I love the meme here. Again, I got to throw one in here uh, of the traditional recruiter um, even before right, where they're actually asking and looking for someone who's currently employed rather than somebody that isn't. Um, and when you think about that, right, you have to be strategic. 
um, you know, today, especially again, and, and this being a little bit more of a trying time for a lot of companies and figuring out ways that they can really invest and really leverage and, and stretch out some of the internal talent that they already have, um, you need to look at how you can reallocate and redeploy your current talent, right? So, um, you know, we, there's a lot of research done by Gallup and Gallup had actually identified, um, it, you know, voluntary turnover as being a trillion dollar problem because cost of attrition is just so high. Um, so when you think of you know one or two X of an annual salary, that adds up. Um, and they should never get to that point where they're actually looking at leaving your organization, um, particularly now when you really need to hold on to your employees. So your employees' expectations. This is super important and I really wanted to spend some time on this because you know your existing workforce is the lifeblood of your organization, right? Um, so, when you look at it, almost three quarters of employees are open to hearing about new opportunities, right? 90% um, just about actually would consider even a lateral move within their own company. So they're not looking to leave per se, right? They just need an opportunity for advancement or need an opportunity in front of them that's relevant that makes time for them and of course the right time. Um, so your internal candidates really make up one of the top two sources of hiring. So statistically, we did have a session. Um, I know we're on week nine right now, but we had a session on employee referrals. That is your other top source of hiring. So when you're looking at your hiring initiatives, those are the two easiest and simplest ways to really make an impact in your organization today. And one thing I can say about that is that your internal candidates and your employee referral should make up about 50% of your total hires. Um, and they're also generally about five times as successful as things like job boards and career sites um, using those other methods. So again, just really want to make sure that you're investing your time wisely. Um, and that's in, of course, your internal candidates. And more along the lines of employee expectations, I mean, they really expect internal ability to be part of their career growth at organizations. They want you to leverage their skills, right? Their expertise, their experience. Um, you know, we, we talk about things like redeployment right now, where you're really trying to invest heavily in your people, but you're also trying to make sure that you're remaining as profitable as possible, maybe reskilling and moving people to different positions right now. Um, you want to be able to match them to open opportunities. So you need to make sure that they're relevant and they make sense for your employees as well. Um, they are obviously always you know, open for learning opportunities and they want to move up, down, and really all around that, you know, laterally as well, that corporate lattice. So, um, you know, think of it really as a way, um, you know, for the employee side of the house, for them to be able to look around your entire organization and find something that matters to them, right? It doesn't always have to be promotional advancement. But when we look at what causes employees to leave an organization, you know, workers aren't happy unless they are reaching their fullest career potential. You know, I'm actually one for that, and that's one of the main reasons why I've actually joined with Job Byte is because I feel that I'm able to really bring myself to work every day and help on making really the world a better place um, through providing the technologies that can enable things like this. So um, when you look at it statistically, you know, almost 60% of workers really agree that their companies don't have enough growth opportunities, right? That's a little scary there. Um, and almost 70% would be more satisfied, right? If they employers better utilize their skills and abilities. I mean, who doesn't want to be used to their full ability and potential? Um, on top of that, of course, you know, another big reason why people leave their current companies is in order to take their careers to the next level. So when you look at it, actually, according to CEB, the number one reason why people leave companies is due to lack of career development, right? So that could trickle down into a lot of different things, but at the end of the day, you need to be providing your employees with the opportunity for career development and advancement. So when you think of candidates, particularly passive candidates, those are your employees, right? Um, again, I had to throw another agreement here, but you know we are all victims of this. Um, I talked to a lot of leading organizations and we all jokingly talk about how there's always a recruiter in our inbox um, or somebody sending a tailored message in our mailbox. So you know, why isn't the company spending or investing the time like these other companies are to really go out and recruit the talent, right? So, you know, we've all been there, we've all done that executive to, um, to employee at any level. Um, you need to be really serious about your employees and you need to be serious about having an internal mobility platform and program for them. So from an employer standpoint, right? I wanna talk about some of the best practices there. And for that, you know, the talent audiences that we really look at here from a recruitment marketing standpoint here at Jobvite, um, we look across things like your key talent audiences, right? Your high volume, your job families, and your targeted or really critical jobs, and then the strategic audience. So think of diversity or underrepresented right now, how important that is. 
veterans, military, things of that nature. Um, your relationship audiences are very important. That is, of course, your employee referrals, which we already talked about, and your existing employees. So different audiences require different strategies. So when you look at it from an organizational standpoint, you really need to be able to identify these audiences, and you need to make sure that you're actually implementing strategies that are going to move the needle on each one of these, right? So this is very, very important because you want to be able to reach some of your hiring goals around these. And of course, we can help you with that thing. And I always talk about organizations really, you know, I mean, recruiting can't stop after the first day, right? It's, it's pretty simple, but modern recruiting must go beyond, right? So traditional recruiting software and technologies are really designed to find external candidates, right? They're not there to help you keep them. So you should really know your ABCs in this case, right? Which is you should always be recruiting and ways to go beyond really include thing or dot 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 internal mobility right so I did put something in the top right corner here that I, I want everybody to take home when, which is a study by future staff which is, says that 87 percent of companies believe that an internal mobility program would really help with retention right yet only a third actually have these programs so why is that right there could be a slew of different things but at the end of the day that's simply not a statistic that can be ignored ignored so let's talk about how to create an internal mobility program, right? So here's five tips to creating a culture of internal mobility, right? You need to be transparent and you need to encourage transparency, right? And what I mean by that is you need to have the ability to be able to talk about your program and what you're looking for. You need to be able to encourage transparency across your entire organization into what opportunities are being made available into what your company is doing to help these types of people in your organization, particularly your internal hires, right? So your existing employees being the lifeblood of your organization. You need to create a fluid work environment. I think more so than any time other than today, um, you know, there's a need for people to be able to perform multiple tasks, right? So this kind of talks into a little bit of a lot of the different topics that are coming up today around reskilling employees or, or skills inventory and management and understanding really where your, your employees are today and where you can get them tomorrow um, to make sure that you don't have those gaps, right? So you're giving your employees both you know, an opportunity for development and you're giving your actual company the opportunity to have your employees perform other job responsibilities um, that they wouldn't otherwise normally be doing. So it's really a win-win situation um, because it's more ROI for your organization. Um, you wanna encourage multi-direction career moves, right? So again, we talked a little bit earlier about how employees are you know, so keen to be able to move around within the organization and they would actually rather consider a lateral move within your organization rather than even moving upwards outside of your organization. So they want to stay. So you need to find a way to really be able to encourage multi-direction career moves, right? You need to turn your management team into coaches. And what I mean by this is everybody in your organization needs to be able to effectively communicate, and again, this is part of being transparent and encouraging that transparency into what opportunities are available, right? And more so, they need to have opportunities to understand these coaches you know, what bench strength you might have. So this kind of gets into having potentially some different tools, but, you know, more importantly, just understanding what you have readily available today, identifying some of the gaps of tomorrow, and just really future-proofing your organization. You do need to reward your leaders who coach. It, that is so important. When we talk about things like talent hoarding, which we'll touch on in just a moment, but when we talk about these leaders that are really taking, um, you know, an active role to be able to coach your employees today, it's great for you to be able to reward or incentivize them, whether it's something monetary, whether it's something non-monetary, but it's an incentive for you to be able to help push these people that are really creating a culture of talent mobility or internal mobility across your organization to be able to bring you to that next step, right, to a more sophisticated open organization, right? Because what you'll find actually is that organizations that actually have a program around internal mobility are gonna have higher ROI than those that don't, 
right? So, you know, companies that invest in telemobility see an average of, let's say, 21% increase in profitability, right? They report higher productivity, engagement, and customer satisfaction. So, again, reward the leaders that coach, get the opportunities in front of your employees. So how do you create a successful internal mobility program, right? I mean, there are a lot of organizations out there that are taking a stab at it right now. Um, you really want to use a proactive approach, right? You want to leverage a blend of technology and targeted efforts to really enable your organization to look internally first, right? So start looking at what you have. Um, there's a lot of technology out there that's uh, you know, beginning to start looking at ways of helping organizations with this. Um, but majority of organizations today, you know, they understand their employees are their greatest assets um, and they don't want to lose that war for talent to their competition. So you really need to be able to leverage your existing talent at scale and be able to connect those employees in a smart way with opportunities, right, that are matched specifically to their skills, expertise, and interests, right? So you need to, again, and when we talked about transparency, you have to be able to gain visibility and tap into your existing work right so using technology can actually do that um, they can help you retain and develop your employees at the same time so you can actually have things like talent profiles uh, where you're actually collecting more information on your people right and you can use those in tandem actually with some of the technology and the tools that you're already using right you can also on top of that take talent surveys um, where you can actually understand your employees a little bit better. You know, what is it that they're looking for as their next step in the organization? Are they open or amenable to a move? You know, what is it exactly that is driving this person and keeping them at your organization, right? So you want to really be able to use um, that survey then to be able to put relevant opportunities in front of people. And then you want to be able to give a VIP apply experience for your internal applicants. So once they've found this opportunity, you have to be able to make it super easy, easier than an external candidate for internal applicants, right? So, um, you know, there's plenty of ways to do that. And again, I encourage you to reach out to us if you want more information on how we actually do that. Um, but above all, you know, you have to have a searchable database too to identify internal candidates that are best fit. So um, this kind of gets into a proactive versus a reactive state. So you want to be able to have the ability to, if your actual candidates aren't doing this on their own, to be able to go out and reach out to them yourself, right? So um, if they're not making that first move, you certainly can do that for them, right? So, you know, job matching technology can even suggest jobs, right? Um, whether it's lateral or vertical for career progression as well. So think about using that database and think about using and having a way for you to be able to, again, lean on technology to make that first step into understanding what you have um, even further on than you do today. The second thing on creating a successful internal mobility program is around communication, right? So we kind of talked about using that proactive approach just again. It's a blend of really technology and targeted efforts, right? Um, we want you to look internally first. Um, so with that being said, you can really use you know, a campaigning functionality. Uh, I believe it was the first or second slide that we talked about the Job Seeker Nation report and how people like to hear about opportunities, whether it's from their manager, whether it's from a peer, whether they're finding it out on their own. Um, but again, you know, 65% of people aren't even looking, right? So you need to make sure that you're putting things out there that are relevant, again, to that key or that talent, that, that, that talent audience of your internal employees today, right? So these communications really need to be not just customized, and when I say customized, that means personalized, right? It can be proactive, and it needs to assist or make them feel that it's in the employee's best interest from either a career progression or, you know, some type of aspiration uh, with that employee, right? So. Again, I think the key here um, is being proactive and reactive, but more importantly, you need to be super targeted. So you need to understand your employees, and that's why some of the technology that I just talked about comes in so important in this actual aspect, because we really want you to be able to not only understand the employees better, but then once you understand those employees better, be able to then target them right in a methodical, efficient way. So there are different ways that, that you can do this, um, and we can jump into that a little bit more should you be able, or should you actually have any more questions related to that. And you know, lastly, really, you know, when we talk about your internal hiring process, 
Like, there's a lot of different things you can actually start talking about, right? So creating an internal hiring process requires that you really set up grounds, right? So for example, you know, some, some companies really require an existing employee to be maybe in a current role for a certain amount of months. Um, others don't, right? But almost half of employees might, I mean, half of employers rather, actually require internal candidates to notify their manager that they've applied for an internal role. So these are just a couple examples I threw out there. Um, and some of these examples could actually lead to, uh, to other things, such as, again, if you have to ask your manager, there is a, you know, an opportunity there for people to actually have um, you know, an issue of what's called talent hoarding, which means that you know, your manager might actually not give you an approval to move along. So when you think about using technology and communications and really eliminating some bias for your organization, um, especially as we move into this, this new normal and, and people really looking at diversity and inclusion and making sure that everything is fair for people, um, you want to be able to put, again, the most relevant opportunity in front of the most relevant person, no matter who it is. So, you know, I do encourage, of course, um, you being able to campaign um, and push out the information to the right people. Um, the other thing, too, is, you know, you can set up ground rules around, you know, anti-poaching. Um, so there are ways that you can look into if you don't want somebody to move from the business unit to another one, these are all things that again, getting, getting back to the technology and how you actually set that up. Um, you can actually leverage the technology to protect you from some of these things and to automate this. Um, but at the end of the day, you do want to actually have a robust program and an internal hiring process that has ground rules associated with it, right? And those will change over time. Uh, but ultimately, again, you want some guidance for your employees and of course, for the management. So the benefits of investing internally, let's talk about that, right? There's a lot of benefits. Um, internal hires, first off, are you know, almost 20 times more effective, right? So uh, when you look at that candidate source, we talked about that being one of the leading sources of hiring. So there's, of course, going to be lower cost, reduced time to fill, um, you know, faster ramp up. So when you think of lower cost as well, I mean, they can be 50% less to hire. Um, faster ramp up, internal candidates actually have a shorter learning curve. So they already know the team and the culture, right? Um, the reduced time to fill that we just talked about, you're really often able to fill an open position faster by promoting from within. Um, they're lower risk, right? Um, it, there's lower risk to making a bad hire as your candidate is a known entity, right? In terms of personality, work style, on the job performance. Um, the other thing is too, you look at improved employee engagement, you actually improve, improve morale, right? By giving existing employees chance to move up or even stand up or move around in the organization, right? So um, I think the most important thing and most relevant to right now for organizations is really being able to kind of future proof by building a talent pipeline. So you want to be able to start now promoting internal candidates to support your succession planning, right? Or redeployment issues as well. So these are all important things that you want to look at here um, as huge benefits of an internal hire. Um, as you actually roll out an internal mobility program. So I know I said a lot there. I tried to be pretty brief, but um, you know I do want to actually wrap up here by talking about you know how you can still check out Summer to Evolve. Again, this is week nine now. Very exciting. We're, we're here to really talk about internal mobility. Um, and so what's coming up this week right now, um, I hope you all join us for the Two Talented. Um, Jillian Ramos, Associate Director of Talent Mobility at Group M will be there as long as, as well as Gina Papa, um, VP of TA and Retention at Palo Alto Networks. Um, and they'll be talking about how to fill roles with talent already inside of your organization. Um, so that's going to be a really great opportunity for you to see that. Um, we also do have a fantastic demo day um, around why your talent search should be done from within. So when I talked about you know, the technology and the way that, so that you can communicate with employees, um, you're going to have an opportunity to be able to see that in action. Um, and then we also have a recruiter real talk. Um, I will be on there shortly uh, as well. Um, but we want to talk about really the secret sauce to filling open roles, and that'll be on Friday. And then of course, just a friendly reminder that next week's theme is content strategies. And of course, get social with us here at Jobvite. Thank you so much for joining me today. Hashtag Jobvite S2E.